I hear there is this house called Miriam's house. Tell us about it. Miriam's house, we started about eight years ago because our graduates of Project Extreme, meaning once they turn 18, they're no longer in the program, and uh, they're in a better place. Not only your program, but they age out of, of numerous programs. Teenage programs, right. correct. And they're in a better place, clean, sober, working, going to school, but because of you know the trauma or abuse um, that they have suffered, they need a place to live. They need a safe place to live. So we opened up Miriam's house originally for graduates of Project Extreme, 18 plus. Um, once we opened the doors, we had a lot of requests for people outside of Project Extreme. And so now we take any girl over the age of 18 that would benefit from the program. There's supervision there from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. So it's an application process. There's vetting. Yes, yes. And as long as a girl is growing, she's moving in the right direction, and she has a place where she can live and she can continue to grow. And um, it's been unbelievably and, successful. And then just structurally, what, what's the supervision there? How does that work? Supervision means staff is there from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., so they're there, they're available as a resource, and they're there just to make sure that the house is safe and they're safe. And during the day, the girls are either working or they're in school. They see a therapist. They have responsibilities. They have chores that they have to do. They have a curfew, you know. And um, So, again, they're part of a community, and they have to sustain and, and have responsibilities within that community. Correct, correct. And uh, we've seen a lot of success in girls transitioning, to the point where they're able to move out and live independently or get married. You know, it just depends on the girl. And um, the only way that we're able to do this is through the generosity of individuals that help us out. And do Miriam House girls pay rent? They do pay. It's a minimal amount, um, which doesn't even cover the costs, to say the least. Um, but it's part of their being responsible and part of them moving in the direction where ultimately they'll be able to live on their own. So it's more of a responsibility um, type issue. Great. And how many women are in Miriam's So we house? don't take more than six girls at a time because we really want it to be a family and we don't want it to be an institution. Just wanted to add that... Even more so than a, a safe place to live, it's the emotional support that we do give these young women. You know, the residents that live in the home need to be at a more advanced place in life than the teens that come to our other Project Extreme programs. But just because they're not involved in dangerous activities and they're not experimenting with drugs or alcohol or, or, or partying, doesn't mean that they don't still need that emotional support. And they need that, you know, parental guidance that some of them don't have. And young adulthood comes with so many challenges in and of itself. And to be able to hold down a job or to maintain a full-time school career takes so much um, emotional balance and, and work and effort that you know, young adults really do still need that parental support and they need people to make sure that they're okay and check in on them. And help them navigate all those things of you course. mentioned and more and their social lives and their, yeah, and their family situations. Hi, Bracha. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, thank you so much. It's so good to hear your voice. Definitely. Okay. I'm glad to. I understand that you are the clinical director in uh, Project Extreme. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. And I've been the social worker in camp for the past four years, which I've been very happy to do. The way that I see Marion's house is I always describe it as a place for um, young adults, you know, 18 plus, who are on a path of growing and are doing really well, but need a little extra support and help in navigating challenges that come up in their day-to-day -day life and continuing to work on the bigger pieces like the traumas and, and the difficulties that they've been through so far. So what we provide is a supportive, safe environment 
for them to deal with those issues and have people who are pushing them and pointing out where they need to grow, what they need to work on, and teaching them the skills that they need to do so. It happens to be that uh, Miriam is here right now, one of the mm. residents. So, Miriam, what do you think about what Bracha just said in terms of what Miriam's house is all about? Um, I think it's really accurate. What was your journey? So how did you find Miriam's house or did you find Project Extreme first? Tell us tell us your story, Miriam. Sure. I was a camper and then while I was a camper I found out about Miriam's house and then yeah, I moved in shortly after I turned eighteen. How long were you in Project Extreme before you moved into Miriam's house? Two years. And what was attractive to you about Miriam's house or what did you feel your need was? I needed to move out of my parents' house and I met the residents from Miriam's house while I was in camp and I really connected with them and I wanted to live with them. Um, the idea that there was like a supportive component was also really inviting that like there was somebody there, someone taking care of your needs. Like you didn't have to worry about that. So you feel like you have grown and continue to grow while being in, in Miriam's house? Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you very much, Bracha. Thank you for Thank calling. You, Bracha. You're welcome. Thank you for having me on. Have a good night. Have a good night.